to sit here recording this. It is cold and rainy outside. Tomorrow it's supposed to be clear and sunny. You really never know what the weather has in store. Things come up, things change. That happens in painting too. For I was working on a dual portrait, and then a new opportunity popped up. So I've shelved the dual portrait for a short time while I work on a landscape. The American River. Well, it all started with me surfing the net, as I do all the time. I'm always on the computer, I'm always looking up news, stories, reading sports, watching videos, and one night I was looking for information on a art society that I'm going to be joining, I think, later in the year, the Northern California Association of Artists, and they have a juried art show coming up uh, at the end of April. Uh, the submissions have to be in by the end of April. The accepted works will be displayed in early to mid-May. The theme of the art show is where the wild things are. It is all about the American River that I live next to here in Northern California. The American River runs through Sacramento area, then runs into the foothills, the Sierras, and is one of my favorite places to go. It always has been as a kid. So I thought this would be an excellent chance, an opportunity for me to paint something that I'm very passionate about, which is the environment. And so that is what I'm working on. So I went down there and got some reference material. It was not the uh, calmest of days, as you will see. If you're going to do a paint of a landscape of an actual place, it's a good idea to actually go to that place to get reference material. It's also a good idea to show up when it's not so damn windy. At the American River near Folsom here in California, Northern California. It is windy as hell. But I got a guard dog with me, so I'm okay. Come on, guard dog. Thanks for tangling me up. Ah. Anyways, nice day at the river. Just really windy. Let's get the hell back inside where it's warm. So then I came back into the studio and I looked over all the pictures that I'd taken. I took a whole bunch of pictures here. I, you see the bridge, trees, the river. I took all kinds of shots. And uh, so I come home and I take all those elements together and, and I start sketching. And you can look at the sketches here. I took, I did three different sketches actually to figure out the layout. One, two, three. Every artist should have a sketchbook. That's my opinion. You should sketch things out, get your ideas out before you go to the canvas. Otherwise, it can turn into a disaster. So I spent a lot of quality time doing these sketches, as you'll see. So this is the painting after five sessions, and it's a long far enough to where I think I can convey what I'm trying to express in this painting. So let's start off by talking about the environment. My favorite time of year to visit the river is when it's cold and rainy. Uh, I, I kind of like that time in late January through February 
when you get a lot of rain at the American River and you kind of get that sense that everything's ready to be reborn, you know, spring's just around the corner and just the sights and the smells of the river, it's, it's wonderful, it's unique and that's the time of period that I wanted to paint and it's convenient that I'm painting it at that time of year, it's, here it is in uh, late February and that's what I'm painting. So after I got some photographs of the uh, American River, I, you know, I took some shots of the sky, of cloudy skies, and so that's what I'm going after here. Now you see it's it's kind of a broken up sky, suggesting either storm is building or storm is leaving. But either way, you know that there is a lot of moisture in the air, and I've tried to also convey that with the ground here. A lot of dark earth tones I'm putting in to suggest that it's a wet landscape. I started putting in the trees. These are going to be pine, so they haven't, they're have not finished. There's no pine needles yet, but there will be. Uh, American River features a lot of maple trees, a lot of pine trees, a lot of, a lot of mix of, uh, you know, different conifers and deciduous trees. So that's what I'm working on here. Now the star of the painting is nature. And, there, and obviously the most obvious element that grabs you first, I would think, would be this deer. This is going to be a blacktail um, mule deer buck. And these deer are found all over the Sacramento River, or excuse me, the American River, here in the Sacramento area. And I have him, you know, very large, and I have it, so I want to have the perspective that of you're the, you as the viewer are like walking around the river and you're peering around some bushes and you just happen to cross this deer and that's what I'm trying to get is you you had the feeling that you discovered that deer while he was getting a drink or bathing or something you know so in terms of composition it's the American River features you know a bike trail it's the American River Parkway so I wanted to include that in the painting so I have the bridge here this bike trail bridge and you notice how it's leading into the deer and that's intentional hopefully it brings the viewers eyes to the deer I've learned that to paint an effective landscape painting of an actual place you sometimes have to add and subtract certain elements for example I'm gonna paint this bridge but it's not exactly the most attractive bridge with all this wrought iron to support it look I mean that's just too much but I'll include this element but I'm probably gonna have to take out some of these bars it would just be way too distracting in the painting. But I like the look of it. It's still a nice place for a bridge. If you come around here. I mean, look at the support beams there. It's, it's got the old wood underneath it. It's got these metal, some sort of pylon, metal pylons of some sort to support it. It's really a good looking bridge. If it wasn't for the, this, the iron work here, the gate on the side, that's hideous. So I'm probably going to embellish it, take out a few of this See a few of the bars there to get rid of some of the verticality because it's going to look too distracting in the painting. So there's going to be some bicyclists on this bridge. They're going to be considerably smaller because they're in the distance, obviously. But also, the nature elements, I want them dominating any human figures because the statement I'm trying to make here is this is a fragile ecosystem, but nature is still in charge here. And we don't own the American River as people, we just visit it. Or maybe it's on loan to us, but we have to keep passing it down a generation, and it's up to us to keep it preserved. One thing I like about that area is it looks wild. It's, there's not a lot of development there. Now there's lots of neighborhoods that surround it, but the actual American River, which the parkway itself at the bike trail stretches over 30 miles, it's, it's in great shape. and. That's you know I'm you notice there's very little evidence of ma uh, man's activity. You're gonna have the bridge and the bicyclists. <clears throat> that's it. Moving down from there, here's the river. I've already put down a couple of layers of color. Eventually, this is gonna have a silvery, gray look to it because it's gonna be reflecting the cloudy sky. I put down these rocks here. These are in crimson, and they're gonna be glazed over when it's dry enough because I want to make these rocks appear like they're underwater. So actually the river water will be coming up here, but it's going to be very shallow right here, so the deer is going to be walking around. There will be some bigger rocks right here. So the, you know, I, I, when I look at the composition of how this is coming together, 
I kind of realize it looks a little bit like a like a window with <clears throat> four viewing panes maybe or even four different uh, imagine four different screens with different images on them because if you cut this in quarters the top left would be this cloudy sky with some interesting cloud designs the top right will be the pine trees and all the negative space that goes with it the bottom left is going to be the deer and the bridge the bottom right is going to be all about the river and the current it makes for uh, interesting composition I guess you have you know major players for each pain we'll see how it comes out I'm liking the way it's developing so uh, if you would like to follow along at the, with the development of this painting because I don't really have a whole lot to show you in terms of video uh, I'm not really filming this one in video uh, just because yeah, I'm really focused on this and I just try to minimize the distractions so but I am taking updated photographs at each stage if you want to follow along with that go to my Facebook fan page The Art of Ryan G. Williams <clears throat> and you can see updated pictures like I said I'm five sessions in and I'm getting there and uh, it'll it'll definitely be done before my, my, my set deadline of April 15th so I think that'll about do it for this episode uh, maybe not as um, exciting, I don't know, as previous episodes, because I'm not showing you a lot of pain, I'm just showing you kind of the process. I guess this episode is more about preparation. You know, sketching on the canvas and such. Oh, speaking of that, preparation, the deer hasn't been painted at all, but you notice it's kind of got this orangish look to it. Well, I toned the canvas before I started with uh, some burnt sienna. That's why that is. And then I sketched in the charcoal. And it gives a a nice underglow to the clouds. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the clouds already in some spots have a faint glow, an orangish glow. I think it gives the clouds a little bit of life. So anyways, if you want to follow along, go ahead and check out on my Facebook fan page and uh, check out the art blog for more information too. I always update on that every couple weeks usually. So uh, thank you very much and I look forward to bringing you the final product and also, um, the previous episode I said I'd be mentioning the Joker and the Doc Holly Payne. That is coming up. I had to put that on the shelf, as you can imagine, because I had to get to this. This has a set deadline, so I want to meet that. That one's on the shelf, but it is coming out soon, I promise. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.